One Punch Man, Saitama. He's famous for being an absolutely broken hero, just ridiculously powerful and able to literally end almost any fight with just one punch thrown. But just how powerful is Saitama? Really? Does he have any limits? Is he infinitely powerful? Can he actually win all fights with just one punch? Well today, that's what we're going to find out. Saitama was once an ordinary man like you or me, trying to get by in a 9 to 5 world and make ends meet. But having always wanted to be a hero as a kid, Saitama began to train hard, doing 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, and running 10 kilometers every day for 3 years. And as a result of all that training, two things happened. One, his hair fell out, and two, he became so strong that he could kill any monster with just one punch. Which honestly, really sucked. Since becoming strong, Saitama was able to be a hero as a hobby, but his overwhelming power denied him what he wanted most, a real fight, where he could go all out and push the limits of his strength. What's more, the world at large didn't seem to acknowledge his power, dropping him at the bottom of the hero ranks and attributing most of his efforts to others. In that time though, he's met and taught the Cyborg Genos, encountered all sorts of incredible monsters like Boros, Orochi, and Garo, and prevented massive cataclysms more than once. And though he doesn't make a big deal of it, Turns out he's got some pretty good heroic instincts, so maybe this hero thing will work out after all. No matter how much you try, there are limits to your growth. God actually designed it this way, where each creature has to grow within certain parameters, and the mechanism to control that growth is called a limiter. Heroes work hard to develop their talents and gain incredible powers or they enhance themselves with experimentation or cybernetics, or some are simply born with remarkable gifts. But Saitama is different. He was a normal person of ordinary birth with an ordinary lifestyle and no particular talent. Yet, just through sheer effort, he forced open his limits and demolished his limiter. He self-evolved, acquiring unimaginable, limitless strength. So strong that Saitama is able to effortlessly defeat powerful monsters and villains with a single casual punch. He's done this plenty of times. Pretty much every monster that Saitama runs across, well, he can destroy them with just one punch without even trying. And Saitama is always getting more and more powerful too, to the point where he's fought against a simulation of himself from just the day before was able to take him out with one punch. He's destroyed a meteor that was threatening several countryside cities with just one punch. He's jumped from the moon to the earth before, destroying a lot of the moon's surface in the process. And he's easily one-shot monster King Orochi, whose body is durable enough to contain part of the earth's core inside of him. Or his durability is so great, that most punches thrown his way are just meaningless. They don't do a thing. They literally can't hurt him or affect him. And he's so fast, they can kill monsters and appear to be standing in place and having never moved, or dodge attacks and keep up with opponents so easily that he just thinks it's funny. And that's all when Saitama is barely even trying. If Saitama wants to though, he can perform the serious series moves. In the serious series, Saitama is basically trying a bit harder and putting more effort into his attacks, unlike before. Still not even close to his upper limits though. He's been able to one-shot Elder Centipede and obliterate evil ocean water with a serious punch, and he's deflected Lord Boros's Collapsing Star Roaring Cannon which had the power to wipe away the planet's surface with just one serious punch. And in the process, well, he split apart the atmosphere and killed Boros. Saitama is even so powerful that he could blow apart the Earth with just one punch 
if he really wanted to. It's just that he would never want to do that. And then there's his fight against Garo. Garo might not have started out as much compared to Saitama, but after having some power imparted to him by God, Garo became one of the most powerful beings in the universe and was able to give Saitama the best fight he's ever had. And even then, Saitama was still able to win and was fighting with just one hand. But it's the most serious that we've ever seen Saitama, so let's take a look. During the fight, Saitama is pushed further than he's ever been before, and experiences an exponential growth rate in his powers that we've never seen before. It looks like a combination of emotional pressure and a worthy opponent gave Saitama the opportunity to tap into powers that again we've never seen before. He can destroy a moon with a serious table flip. A serious sneeze blows away all the gas surrounding Jupiter's core, and he's able to send Cosmic Garo flying with each punch he lands. And all of Garo's powers, every technique at his disposal, the best it can do is just destroy Saitama's clothes. And even though Cosmic Garo is literally copying all of Saitama's stats, Saitama is growing so fast in his strength, his speed, his durability, that Garo literally can't keep up. And still, none of this is near Saitama's upper limit. Now, all that being said, I do kind of want to address the idea of Saitama being a gag character. Because even though he is, it's not necessarily in the way you might think. The joke isn't that Saitama can beat everything or everyone in just one punch. Even though his name is One Punch Man, that's not necessarily true. Mostly because there have been powerful enough opponents who have been able to survive Saitama's punches before, at least for a little while. Like look at Lord Boros and Garo. No, see Saitama's gag is that he's an anime protagonist at the end of his series put in at the beginning of the series, where he's too strong to have a challenge. So therefore, he's basically able to beat every opponent he runs across with just one punch. All this to say, even though Saitama's limiter has been broken, it doesn't necessarily mean that he has no limits to his strength and can instantly scale to any opponent and put them down with just one punch. It more means that he has limitless potential growth. The only thing holding him back is actually the world around him. He needs good fights and equal competition in order to grow and get stronger. There's not much of that around him. It's like a world-class weightlifter being stuck with just five pound dumbbells. Only so much you can do. And that's why Saitama began to grow so exponentially more powerful during his fight with Cosmic Garo, because he had finally found an equal opponent, and so he could finally start truly getting stronger. And in Saitama's fight with Garo, he did several incredibly impressive things, destroying a moon with one hand, destroying a huge part of Jupiter with a sneeze. But the most impressive one was the serious punch squared, where Saitama and Garo's fists clashed, and Saitama contributed half the force necessary to create a massive explosion and leave a hole in the universe, erasing countless stars, solar systems, potentially even galaxies, wiping them from existence without a trace. Now, there have been plenty of attempts to try and quantify this feat, but general consensus is that it's somewhere between multi-solar system to multi-galaxy level in power. And with how exponentially fast Saitama is growing in power during the fight, this isn't even near his limit. He well surpassed this. And I think this is really the kicker. Saitama is always going to be getting more and more powerful his power is always exponentially growing, to the point where even though Garou's 
whole power was being able to copy other people's power. And even though this power was given to him by God, he still couldn't copy Saitama's powers. Because Saitama's power growth rate just absolutely dwarfed Goro, and Goro couldn't keep up. And that's Goro with the power of God. And then when Saitama decides to end the fight, well, Saitama gains the power to manipulate the particles within his body on the subatomic level, forcing them to behave like antiparticles, allowing Saitama to time travel to reverse causality and throw a zero punch at Goro, resulting in his defeat before his fight with Sirius Saitama ever even began. Basically, Saitama was able to actually win a fight, not just in one punch, but with zero punches. Saitama's strength and power is constantly growing, and since all of Saitama's top feats were performed without being bloodlusted, or even fighting with just one hand, well, there's a theory that for Saitama, there exists a level beyond normal or even serious, the death level, a bloodlusted Saitama, reserved for him potentially fighting against God at the series finale. And Saitama truly not holding back, going all out, well, that is a very, very scary thing making him possibly one of the strongest, most powerful, and most broken heroes in all of fiction, able to really, truly beat almost anyone in one punch. But what do y'all think? Sound off in the comments down below. I know you're gonna have thoughts and feelings on this one for sure. If you stuck around this long and made it to the end of the video, that's amazing. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting us. And if you want to go subscribe, well, go subscribe. You're going to see more videos like this one every single week. I'll see y'all then. I'll see y'all next time.